Hi, this is the start of video series about building a Uniflow steam engine based on a design for a very small Uniflow engine in this book by Stan Bray called Making Simple Model Steam Engines and most of the engines in this book have got a cylinder bore of about half an inch, 10-12 centimeters. The engine that I'm building has a bore of 3.5 times that approximately, so it's got a 35 millimeter bore. Now here you see the start of the chapter of the book, um, which describes how this engine is built, and he calls it a clapper engine, or a clapper valve engine. Basically how it works is that if you look at the cylinder there, the right hand side there's a valve in the end of the cylinder and that's the steam inlet. So it's a very simple design. The steam comes in that valve but it's got a ball in it, it's a check valve. And there's a pin in the top end of the piston which opens the check valve at the top end of each stroke. This video is not only an introduction to the engine but it's also a kind of video build log mainly based on photographs this one of uh, my starting point which was pulleys. Now originally these two brass discs that you've just seen and the one that I'm machining here actually was in were intended to be twin flywheels but I decided towards the end of the build that they weren't heavy enough so they're being converted or at least one of them is being converted to a pulley. Anyway, so although they started off life as flywheels, just take them as pulleys in development here. So there are the blanks, uh, five hole pattern drilled, and now this is me machining the boss for one of the pulleys on the lathe, uh, out of brass, uh, the wheels, the pulleys and the, the bosses are brass. And you can see it develop here, being tested on a 12mm shaft. Now what I'm doing is drilling and tapping the hole in the boss of the pulley for a grub screw to secure it to the shaft. There's a, one of the bosses beside two of the pulleys. And the other boss. So coming along here and um, the next step is to fix these bosses into the pulleys. So I use Loctite to do that. It's a retaining compound. It's very good, but I decided to put pins through the, the flange of the boss, right through the pulley, so that it would be doubly secure and not slip in the, in the bore of the pulley. And I used this old pin vise or hand vise that I bought in Brighton when I was on a trip there visiting my daughter to hold the pieces of silver steel that I'm using for the pins just to tidy up the ends of them in the, on the grinding wheel. And there's uh, the pins in position in one of the pulleys, locked edges into position, but still rough. And then what I did was turn them down in the lathe on both sides to make the heads flush with the surface of the brass bush. Now you'll see a terrible pattern of chatter marks there on this pulley. It's not very nice. It makes a pretty pattern, but it's not what you want when you're machining a piece of brass. So, what I did was I changed the insert. I was using a yellow-coloured carbide tip originally. I knew it was wrong, but I just thought I'd get away with it, to be honest. But you see the difference when I changed to the proper insert for non-ferrous metals on the right there. Much better looking job and I'm, I'm happy with that as it is. I'm only using one of the one of these wheels on the, the engine now because of a change of configuration. You'll see all about that later. But the face them both again just to make them look better. One of them will be a spare for another project. And then much later in the sequence of actual build here I'm cutting a small groove on the outside of that wheel to make it into a pulley. And this pulley will just run on a very, uh, very small round section belt to drive. I don't know what, we'll see when the engine's complete. There's a lot of chatter here, you can probably hear it. 
but it doesn't matter so much here. It's inevitable you're going to get chatter in a situation like this where you're machining a groove on the edge of a disc like that. So you saw me there using a needle file just to tidy up the groove a little bit. So that's fine for now. But originally I had intended to make another two pulleys. Well, the original two pulleys were going to be of aluminium and they are flat belt pulleys. So here I have the two pieces of aluminium measured to height and marked out with red layout die. I like my red layout die. Um, and here's the, the initial turned shape of these pulleys. Two small flat belt pulleys and I have some flat belting of the right size to run on them which will be rather nice. Again, I don't know what I'm going to drive with this engine, but at 35mm it will pack a fair punch and it will run something. The boss here of the flat belt pulley is being drilled and tapped for the same reason, so that it can be secured onto the shaft with a grub screw. I'll mill a little flat on the shaft for each grub screw and I'm using flat-ended grub screws, which is quite a nice way. It's not as good as a keyway, but it's, it's okay. Now, to run a flat belt on a pulley, the pulley needs to have a slight crown on it. That's kind of counterintuitive. You might think that you would want a hollow in the middle of the, the, the pulley, but no, it's a crown that you need. So I use my height gauge to mark the face of the pulley into roughly three. You turn down the outside edges at a slight angle so that the pulley ends up wider in circumference in the middle than it is at the edges to create the crown. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you'll join me in the next installment.